Starting with news from South Korea, coronavirus caseload in South Korea is surging. The resurgence of the virus is evident in almost every major city and provincial town. The government has ordered all schools in the greater Seoul region to switch to online classes as they battle the coronavirus clusters. South Korea was hailed throughout the pandemic for its response to COVID-19. But now new social distancing measures have been imposed and warnings of a stricter lockdown has been issued. A new outbreak tied to a far-right church has spurred what President Moon Jae-in calls a severe emergency. As per the health authorities, the country is on the brink of a nationwide outbreak. They have called on people to stay home and limit travel. The government has mandated masks to be worn indoors and outdoors in Seoul. Restrictions have also been imposed on large gatherings, while nightclubs, karaoke bars and cyber cafes will be closed. Now, Bruce Harrison is joining us live from Seoul for more on this. Bruce, thank you so much for joining us. My first question to you, what is the government doing to ensure smooth functioning of these online classes? Well, this is an issue the government had to deal with back in uh, late winter, early spring, when South Korea dealt with its first major outbreak here. Uh, classes were delayed for many months at that point. Uh, at which they did transition to online learning. And the government, despite South Korea's you know, prowess uh, globally as a technological, uh, a country that's heavily wired and has some of the best technology in the world, they discovered that there was a lot of people that had fallen through the cracks who, who didn't have access to, to the Internet they needed or the proper device to take the classes online at home. Um, so the government has spent this summer trying to, to patch over those issues and make sure that all kids uh, through the middle of next month, if that's in fact when they do return to actual classrooms, are able to study. Uh, there's still challenges ahead because a lot of parents didn't anticipate this. South Korea was doing so well. And now all of a sudden you have a, a five-year-old and you have to make sure they're at home to study because they can't go to school, but you're a working mom or you're a working dad. So. What do you do then? A lot of people are still dealing with, dealing with those issues uh, after this sudden announcement. Of course, and I think it's also important to mention that nearly 200 students and school staff have been infected in the past two weeks, as per reports. Do you think that this in some ways linked to the reopening of schools? Should the reopening have been deferred, perhaps? Well, hindsight is 2020, they say. Uh, it's unclear exactly. Uh, how preventable this could have been, uh, you know, through the first reopening period. The government really um, seemed to be doing a good job. They made sure students had these big plastic barriers around their desks. They were disinfecting the buildings all the time. You weren't allowed to chat with your friends at lunch, measures like that. And there was very few cases nationwide throughout public schools. Uh, now we have a lot more infections within the school system after these outbreaks in the Seoul capital area at these churches. And, you know, I think the government, if anything, would suggest that it's just because Seoul is so densely populated and this outbreak came so quickly, uh, they didn't have time to, to, to catch it and it did leak into the schools. But I'm sure there are critics who would say um, maybe the schools were open too quickly or shouldn't have been reopened at all um, when we still didn't have a vaccine and we still didn't know exactly uh, the, the infection rate on the ground. Of course. Now, just for more clarity on this, how is this likely to affect the academic year and functioning of educational institutions in general? I'm sorry, it's, how is it going to affect the... Educational institutions in academic year. This is a huge um, point of concern for parents here in South Korea. Um, you know. The fact that they're still going to be learning online is some comfort that those can make it work. But ultimately, you know, in South Korea's hyper-competitive uh, educational system, uh, there's concern that students are going to fall behind in the necessary courses to prepare them, especially the older high school students for their uh, university entrance exams. Um, like, there, there was concerns the school year would start late. Now they're pivoting to online. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, it's not going to be the education experience that parents had expected uh, ahead for a lot of these kids. So um, it's definitely going to slow things down. The university exams have already been pushed back by a month to December from November. Will it be delayed further? It's entirely possible. Right now we're waiting to see what happens with this outbreak. 
if it gets any worse, the government says they have no choice to go to the top uh, level of social distancing, level three here. You know, that means more than 10 people can't gather in a group. That certainly means schools won't be re reopening, and that'll hamper a lot of other businesses and, um, you know, operations within the education system as well. Of course, definitely that's likely to happen. Uh, thank you so much for all these details. We will definitely be bringing you more as and when we have more.